Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Do you want a revolution? Good morning, y'all. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are doing good. Do you want a revolution? Whoop, whoop. Yes, honey. I remember that song. I remember when that first came out. That was my first introduction to Mr. Kirk Franklin, but it looks like the new generation who may not be hip to who he is, they're being introduced to him via Twitter, okay? If y'all don't know, Kirk Franklin right now is trending worldwide. This is so embarrassing because Kirk Franklin is so much better than that, honey. And he's basically trending worldwide because his grown ass son, Carrion Franklin, basically released an audio of him cussing him smooth out. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, my God, Kirk Franklin is crazy. He needs to be canceled. Look how he's talking to his son. Other folks are saying, child, we've all been cussed out by our parents. So <laughs> welcome to this revolution. We're not canceling Kirk Franklin and that's on silver and gold, okay? So it's been like, you know, 50-50. But I don't think a lot of people realize that Karrion uh, Franklin is getting exactly what he wants. If y'all don't know, he's been blasting his father, Kirk Franklin, for years. This is nothing new, but he just lucked up this time that it went viral. Usually when he goes off about Kirk, we just ignore him. You see, I've never done a video on this shit, but it went viral this time. It actually stuck. And I think the reason why it stuck is because he bought receipts. He bought, you know, Kirk Franklin cussing him out. So let me go ahead and do a breakdown because a lot of people are just taking this situation and running with it, but they're not understanding the backstory. So for y'all who don't know, back in 2018, um, Kirk Franklin's son, Karrion, came out and he basically accused his estranged father of trying to kill him. He took to social media and he wrote this. My own father is trying to kill me. He says, if anything happens, it's at Kirk Franklin's sneaky ass. A lot of funny shit been happening and he's in L.A. right now hiding from me. I haven't heard from him, so I'm just leaving this here for safety purposes. I can't deal with this shit on my own anymore. I'm done. My life is valuable too. In real time, hashtag offline, hashtag so what? So that is what he wrote. So if you guys don't know, Kirk, Kirk Franklin um, shares his two kids, Kennedy and Keziah, with his wife, Tammy. Carrion is his oldest child from a previous relationship. Tammy's daughter, Carrington, is also from a previous relationship, and he ended up adopting her. Okay. Um, now, what was so interesting about him coming out and saying that his daddy was trying to kill him, that same week, Kirk Franklin came out and basically told the world that his sister got 30 years in prison. Now, I don't know what the sister done did. He never elaborated, but this is what he wrote. He says, my sister was sentenced to 30 years in prison. I now feel the weight of wondering if I could have done more. And then he wrote rough week. So around the same time he's dealing with whatever his sister's going through, 30 years is a long time. Like, did she kill somebody? Was she moving weight? I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to know what the hell. Like, <laughs> 30 years. Damn, I could see three, 30. She kill her. Did she massacre somebody? What the sister done did. But anyways, so while he's going through that, his son is accusing him of wanting to kill him. So then what ended up happening is you basically everybody ignored him because nobody cared. Um, so this week... Karrion came out and he basically shared some more disturbing messages on his Instagram page. He says, I'm not allowed to have any childhood pictures of myself or my family. Some of this shit I see y'all complain about is so surface. I've been through the fire. Then he ends up writing on that post. He says, I know the damage you've been through, even if I don't know what you've been through. And then his fans, you know, his few fans, they start replying back to him and the lady is saying, wait, what? And he replies back to her and says, I've waited 14 years for my family to show love. I'm done waiting. She replies back and she says, I hope you I hope your dad is not involved in this foolishness. It would break my heart because I grew up listening to him. Karen then replies and says, he is the source. Y'all so delusional. Keep hoping, though. I hope y'all wake up. Wake me up when everybody's done playing woke. Then he says, my heart's been broke. Put it back together myself without any help. You will too. Then another one of his fans says, for real, for real, this just hit home. But shit, keep your foot on everybody's neck. 
Then he replies back to him and he says, I'm on their ass. Electricity they've never seen. In my diamond looking cracks, but where? I love the truth, the rumors, and the lies. All in their head past their bedtime. They want me to be what they say I'm is. The trippy part is they want me to be what they say I'm is. I'm my own creation. Fuck a Frankenstein. Child, the way he be writing, honey. So those comments ended up going viral. People were like, you know, what the heck is going on? Of course, you know, all the nosy folks ran to his page. So then he decided to kind of downplay the controversy. He says, y'all cool, but I'm not impressed. Same questions, no resolve. I can feel a lot of gossip, not profit. Then he says, generational wealth, huh? Okay, my freedom is the flex, never the check. And so, you know, I guess it didn't get enough traction. Nobody really picked it up. Nobody really cared. I only saw it on one blog. And so then he decided over the weekend to just be super messy and just, you know, spill the tea. Like, y'all taking too long to run with this story, Shade Room, Boss Up, and all these other sites. So let me go ahead and just splash this damn hot ass tea in y'all's lap. So this is the video that Carry On shared. Y'all go ahead and listen to this. Hung up the phone. I'll break your neck. Is that a threat? All right, so you guys just heard that audio. Now, this is also what Karen Rashad says. He says, this is why I'm done. No father should speak to their children like this. If I have any issues, it's because of this type of treatment that I deal with behind closed doors. Hanging up in my face, no apology, no compassion, no effort. Stop telling me to go home to my family. I don't even know where they live. I don't think I'll ever trust my father to be alone to be alone around him ever again. I didn't want to do this. I probably won't release the entire recording because it's too embarrassing that I'm even having to deal with this. No matter what people think, I pray my dad deals with his deep hatred towards me. I don't feel safe around him at all. This recording is recent. It's not from 2018, just to clarify. I'm going to learn from these experiences, live my life in peace, and make beautiful art. And then he went on to write, as soon as they find out you're not stupid, All of a sudden, you're crazy. Then he says, so telling the truth has become a diagnosis for mental health issues. Megan and Harry don't have mental health issues, huh? The allegations might not be true. Hmm. Nothing I've read on any of these blogs is fully true. They can't even use the exact words that I use. When did manipulation become a standard in society? Wake up world, or I mean, keep sleeping if you want to. I'm prepared to speak. It's definitely time to put the entire story out there. The narrative will be controlled by me. So that video went viral. Lots of people had things to say on social media, on Twitter. Honey, everybody was shocked to hear, you know, Kirk Franklin, you know, use those words. I mean, I was after a while, I was like, is this Kirk Franklin? Is this damn the rapper Plies? You know, Plies and Kirk look a lot alike. So these, this is what some people have to say on social media. Y'all can go ahead and check this out. Plies also weighed in, which I thought was funny. Plies says, that was not my dog on the phone. It was me. Hashtag, I take full responsibility for those actions. Then Plies says, I got to put my dog on an album now for real. He sounded just like me on the phone, Bia. Ain't none of us perfect. So that is what Plies had to say. Check out what the rest of the internet had to say.
Well, you're not part of the family the way you are. Oh, boy. I'm not part of the family? No. You don't act right, you're not part of the family. All right, so you guys just saw what everybody had to say. So then Kirk Franklin came out with the video late last night, basically apologizing. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch what Kirk Franklin had to say about the entire situation. Many of you know I have an older son named Carrie Ann Franklin. In May, he'll be 33. For many years, we have had a toxic relationship with him as a family. We've tried for many years through counseling, through therapy, to try to rectify this private family matter. Recently, my son and I had an argument that he chose to record. I felt extremely disrespected in that conversation and I lost my temper. And I said words that are not appropriate. And I'm sincerely sorry to all of you. I sincerely apologize. I want you to know as a father that during that conversation, I called the family therapist and got that therapist on the phone to try to help. He never played that part of the recording. I'm not perfect. I'm human and I'm gonna make mistakes and I'm trying to get it right. Please keep me and my family in your prayer. So after that video of Kirk Franklin apologizing went viral, Karrion ran to his Instagram, honey. And this is what he had to say about it. This whole post on his page is cap. He ain't been consistent with going to counseling. We can verify that. He, he won't even speak to T.D. Jakes again. T.D. Jakes was on that phone call. So you guys just heard what he had to say. He basically says the whole post is cap. And then he went on to write this. He says he apologized to his fans only and not to me. This is why I'm done. His entire story is cap. Then he says, I go to sleep every night with no love for my own people. Just years of comments, carelessness. I'm done reaching out and getting treated like a random on the streets. You want me to go back to my dad and he's not attempting to be in my life? Wake up. There is no relationship to damage. There is no private matter. Just a family treating me however they choose. So that is what he had to say. But on top of him posting that on his Insta stories, he also went on to write this, honey, this whole dissertation on Instagram. He basically posted pictures of him and Kirk Franklin and the family. This was like, I don't know, honey, 20 years ago or something. And he's basically saying that that was the last time he was allowed to be around his family. So he went on to write this. He says, I'm finally out of a 14 year deep hole of chaos and confusion. This is the last picture I was allowed to take with my family. 2006. If my freedom, my light sparks your interest internally, I think about areas in your life you could handle things differently. Imagine being taken across the world from third grade to high school, then never again. If a couple of pages out of my reality made you feel some type of way, just remember that your children will grow and gravitate towards you, or if provoked for too long, we can love you enough to leave you alone. If my dad continues to self-sabotage our progress as a family and ignores me for another 14 years and doesn't accept me, I'll be fine. I am breaking the generational curse right now. 14 years, not one dinner, not one cozy Sunday night together, not invited over for Christmas or any holidays. I am sick of threatening words constantly behind closed doors. I have earned the space to speak how I please about my childhood. None of you walked in my shoes. I'm going to stay focused and keep busy with my clients and my creativity. I will grow from these experiences. Please do not crucify my father. I am not here to bash him across the board. I didn't even cuss in that recording. Why do people assume that I did something to deserve the verbal abuse? I just said what he said back to me. My father has been, has been speaking very mean and manipulatively to me for 15 years now. My voice will be heard. I will forgive him for the past pain. I am learning every day on my own this thing called life. Send positive vibes. It's difficult to focus on my work under these conditions. Yet I'm still going to stay focused. My head is up. Hashtag Swank Media. So that is what he had to say. So his sister Kennedy 
Um, she's the baby in the picture. She decided to reply back to his post. So this is what Kennedy had to say. So Kennedy says, this wasn't the last family picture we took, LOL. I'm really tired of this. If you want to air out things, I can too. I still have screenshots. We have all the screenshots and recordings too. What was so bad about your childhood? Laugh my ass off. You were a black privileged boy. You were legit fed with the silver spoon, given countless opportunities. You just didn't take them. So what now? You mad because you 30? and have nothing to show for it like bro what generational curse are you breaking my nigga lol you couldn't even get into college if it wasn't for your daddy's help you even took advantage of that and flunked out you took advantage of everything your whole life and burnt bridges now you're mad because after all the lies and disrespect you spewed we're tired of being nice then she replies back to her brother and she says at carry on rashad you are going on this rant for why LOL, like answer the question, when have you reached out? And she says, you're 33, who is supposed to help you with money? And he didn't, you weren't around to even know how we were raised or our lives. Then Carrie on replies back to her and um, he says, at Kennedy Franklin, I got my own money. If you miss me, why don't you come kick it though? You know I produce, stop playing. You miss me, it's our bond that will save the family. You're a Taurus, it's time to tap into the heart. You miss me, just be real, open your heart, Ken. You know I'm real. Then he says, like for real, I'm done reaching out. You can come kick it or you can play God by yourself with this energy if you want to. You're not going to be able to say to the world that you've actually caught me before. It's not in the phone records. I miss my little sis. You acting like pop ain't cute. Then he says, call me right now. Call me right now or just leave me alone. You don't truly care about me. I'm the firstborn. Then she replies back and says, you're not answering the question, LOL. When have you reached out? Then she says, you're going to go on this rant for why? LOL, the answer to your question is, when have you reached out? Then she says, I've had the same number since middle school. When have you reached out? So this entire situation is just really sad to see the kids going back and forth, you know, but she wants to defend her father and that is her right. Um, you know, it's just, it's sad to watch all this play out on social media because one, it's not everybody's business, but I'm going to say this. I don't agree with the private recording at all. And one thing I know about people who privately record people, they go into it with malicious intentions nine times out of 10. Also, don't forget when you're the one doing the recording, you have the power to control the narrative. One, you're going to be on your best fucking behavior. Okay. We don't know what he said to Kirk Franklin before he hit the record button. He could have cussed his father out, called him all types of demons and said he wasn't a, you know, he ain't an ain't shit daddy. He could have said everything to him, told him he was everything but a child of God and then hit the record button. And then we get, you know, Kirk Franklin coming out of character, snapping and talking crazy to his son. So let's also remember that when people record phone conversations, they're able to manipulate it how they want to because they know the call is being recorded. The other party doesn't. So I don't buy all that, that he just flipped out on him and he just went crazy, you know, just to be doing it. Not when you privately record it. Because if both parties know that they're being recorded, both parties are going to be on their best behavior. If only one party knows, then they have the right to control the narrative. So miss me with the bullshit. Now, Another thing that I don't respect is that he wants people to not knock his father and, you know, to not crucify him. But the thing is, what was your point of secretly recording your father and posting this on the Internet? You did this to stain his character and you did this because you low key wanted people to crucify him. You know, so it's an oxymoron to then ask for folks to not go after his father. Now, I will say this. He's now 33 years old. You don't need your father to, to, you know, to go with you hand in hand to counseling. If you have issues and emotional things that you're dealing with, you're at an age where you can go yourself and go seek counseling. We've all been through stuff. You know, we've all been through a lot. I mean, I remember times getting cussed out by my damn parents. You know what I'm saying? So this is not nothing new. But I will say that, yes, a father should not talk to their child that way, no matter what the child's age is. But unless I have the full context of the backstory... I'm not going to condemn Kirk Franklin because, again, we don't know what that young man said to his father to cause his father to wild out. Play the whole recording. 
But even then, it doesn't even matter because you went in knowing that it was going to be recorded. So, of course, you're going to be on your best behavior. On top of that, you know, a lot of us grew up emotionally abused. A lot of us are so used to walking on eggshells that we kind of trivialize things like this. And we trivialize the language and we trivialize the context of what's going on. But, you know, let's not trivialize it and make it seem like getting cussed out and being disrespected and called everything but a child of God is okay. A lot of us have been conditioned to think that that's just how parents talk to their kids. No, it's not. Because I know a lot of people who are not emotionally abused and cussed out by their parents. So I don't want to ever normalize that. Have I been talked to crazy? Absolutely. And I'm sure a lot of y'all have too, but that's not normal. So let's not normalize that. We do need to talk to each other with respect, parent to child and vice versa. You know, but I, I just, it's hard for me to feel bad for Karen because Karen, you've been doing this shit for years. You've been blasting your father for years. This time it actually stuck and it went viral. And you have your father trending. And this is just really embarrassing and it's sad. You know, maybe they will be able to come back from this. Maybe they'll be able to, you know, let this go and move forward. But the way that you're doing this, it's going to leave a bad taste in your father's mouth where he's not going to want to fool with you, period. Especially when you're messing up his reputation and his money. At the end of the day, you're 33 years old. You're grown now. You know, I don't think he has any children. I'm not sure. But you are old enough to be a father to somebody else. So at this point, you have to pick up the pieces. Go seek your own counseling, your own therapy and get your life on track. So that way you don't have this baggage holding you down for the rest of your life. OK, everybody has one life to live. You can't live it for your parents. You can't live it for your friends. You can't live it for the world. You have to live your life for you. And when you're stuck in the past and you're still stuck as this 14-year-old boy, all you're doing is hindering your growth process in life. So you need to let that baggage go. You need to let the anger go. And if it means not speaking to your father for the next five years, so be it. Find something to fulfill your life to let go of this anger and move on. Because again, like I always say, you control one person in this world, and that is yourself. As much as some of us want our parents to love us, our significant others, or we want our kids to act a certain way, you cannot control anybody else. Everybody's their own individual being. The only person you can control is yourself, your actions, how you react to stuff, the things that you do. So at this point in time, Mr. Kirian Franklin, at the age of 33 years old, you need to grow up. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on this messy situation. Like, it's crazy that this has gotten this far. Because like I said, he's been doing this for years. But this time it's actually stuck and gone viral. How do you guys feel about this? Do you feel like Kieran was in the right to record and blast his father? Or do you feel like Kieran went into this with nefarious intentions and he did this just to go viral? Also, how do you feel about Kirk Franklin and the things that he said to his child? How do you feel about Kirk Franklin's apology? And then how do you feel about what the daughter had to say as well? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I know YouTube keeps unsubscribing people, honey. Make sure you hit the notification bell so we can get some alerts. Um, let me see. Also, don't forget to thumbs up the video and share the video. Let's get the discussion popping. Thank you guys so much and have a great Sunday.